Okay, good morning everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Okay, good morning. I want to welcome the esteemed media for gracing our occasion. For a start, I want to just brief you about the formalities of the of the press conference. Why we the reason why we call this press conference. We want to brief the media about the modalities about the modalities of our press, uh, the press conference, and also the sit-down strike that the association has organized, the way we are going about it, and also we are going to make some clarifications about the, the statement that was issued by the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Samade, yesterday. So the, for my name is Yusufa Sanyang, and I'm the president of the National Association of Gambian Nurses and Midwives. So the briefing is going to go like this. The Secretary General will issue a press statement and afterwards we will entertain questions and answers from the press. Because we don't have much time and you don't want to waste your, waste your precious time here. So on this occasion, on that note, I will call the Secretary General of the Nurses Association, Mr. Usman Ture, to read the press statement. Good morning to you all. I start by introducing myself. I am Usman Ture, the Secretary General of the National Association of Gambian Nurses and Midwives. And we are so grateful that you people are here to get this information to the general public. The reasons for calling this conference is to let Gambians know the contempt with which nurses are being treated in this country and the conditions under which they work and also offer clarifications on the statements made by the Honorable Minister of Health in the press conference held yesterday. Globally, nurses constitute about 60% of health workers. They provide care 24 hours round the clock for inpatients and outpatients, which constitutes for more than 75% of care for patients in health facilities. There, the, nationally, this people could be even more. There is no single health facility in this country without a nurse. Despite these facts, <laughs> nurses are always treated with contempt. When I was a student nurse, a female nurse was slapped in front of me and I had to intervene. And the issue was run down the drains. Nothing came out of it because we are nurses. I can confirm to you that that matter was laid to rest simply because they wanted to protect some group of people or co-workers. In October 2020, a nurse by the name Barsin Janga was physically assaulted at the Ministry of Health by a senior ministry officer simply for asking, making inquiries about her salary that was not paid and her, and, and her allowances for the COVID-19. This was a matter that went ahead to the police, but the Ministry of Health never took any disciplinary action against that person. Then in December 2020, I, I was personally verbally abused by one of the most senior people at the Ministry of Health. I remained calm and the minister had to intervene to, to, to pacify me to apologize to me on the person's behalf, but no further actions were taken to solve that problem. All these things I am telling you are to show you that nurses in this country are not respected by the Ministry of Health. Their matters means nothing to them. The reason why I am starting from this is to give you a background of all the situations that have been gathering and piling up to where we are today. The working conditions of nurses and their remuneration in this country is sad. Nurses are overworked, they are underpaid, they are underprotected against infection, they are underprotected against working colleagues, they are underprotected against even the public. 
when there, when there are issues between nurses and other colleagues that goes against nurses, there is never justice. Equity or equality in the ways we are treated in the health sector, the disparities are definitely too huge. And they, they are not just about the finances, but even the way that we are treated and respected in the health institutions. About the remuneration of nurses, a nurse in Senegal can pay a nurse in the Gambia three times or more. A nurse in Ghana can pay a nurse in the Gambia three times or more. A nurse in Zambia and Malawi can pay a nurse in the Gambia three times or more. I am not just giving you baseless facts. I have been to some of these countries and I have friends in some of these countries through some international um, linkages that I have with them and I inquire and find out. Just recently, my recent inquiry was in Malawi. In Malawian currency, they have 400,000. It's equivalent to more than close to $30,000 in the Gambia, which can pay more than three nurses. <laughs> Nursing in, is driving by passion in this country, not money. All that nurses are asking for is the minimum. Put food on the table, provide shelter, and live a minimum dignified life. This is what we are asking for. But it will, be, it will sadden you to know that nurses live from paycheck to paycheck. We struggle every day with our basic needs and the needs of our families. Even if you have a family of three. This is the truth. And then I am telling you, because of the payment condition of nurses in this country, nurses work for more than 12 to 18 hours of their life and spend four hours sleeping and three hours for their family. This is the reality. For instance, an on-call allowance at the provincial um, Gambia used to be $200. It was ever $200. Never enhanced. And if, I, if you don't understand what on-call allowance takes care of, I will make you understand. Because you people need to know what is happening. If you work from 8 to 4 as an in-charge in the provinces, from 4 p.m. to the next morning, 8 a.m., any critical case that happens to appear at your health center, you will come. Even if you are in bed with your wife, you will get up and come. And it doesn't matter how many times it happens, you will still come. Every day it can happen, every night it can happen, and you will still come. Up to 30 days, and you are given $200 for all that support. A counterpart in the healthcare profession receives more than $10,000 for the same allowance, for the same issue. So you know the disparity is very clear. Now, problems can never be solved, obviously. Problems can never be solved if they are not identified as problems. Mistakes become willful if they are not owned up to and fixed. Leaders should not mask the true circumstances of scenarios just to paint themselves white. One of the qualities of an ethical leader is integrity, and I am telling you that it is sad that we need a lot of that in public offices in this country. We, own, we owe the nation a duty as nurses. The Ministry of Health owes the nation a duty as an institution. So if the Ministry of Health wants to achieve universal health coverage and give quality care to this nation, it needs to be brave enough to face the reality, speak the reality, do the reality to achieve the reality. This is the status quo. In Coming to the press conference yesterday, I will give you a brief genesis of the situation. A press release was made on the 30th of this month, and it indicated that the minister, uh, paying allowances to the nurses is an initiation of the Ministry of Health. This information is misleading. I will make it clear. The Ministry of Health did initiate an allowance but it was an allowance that was meant for minister himself, doctors that have moved from clinical areas to the main ministry, and PhD holders in the other cares. In the nursing fraternity, people working with the hospitals, the PhD holders are not more than five in the whole country. If it is more than five, not up to 10. Now, there were nurses who were moved from clinical areas to the Ministry of Health. They were not part of this scheme. And the justification was that those doctors that have been moved, 
their allowances have been cut because when you are the clinical area, you are paid some allowances. That if you are not at the clinical area, you cannot be paid those allowances. But the same situation affected the nurses who moved from clinical area to ministry. The same situation affected the nurses who moved from uh, for public health officers who moved from clinical area to ministry. The same situation affected the laboratory scientists. But when the allowance was being taken to the cabinet, those other sectors of the people at the ministry were sidelined. So this clearly shows that it was not about moving from ministry, uh, from health facility to ministry, but it was something based on self-interest motion. And this is the reality. When it happened, I went to the Ministry of Health. I sat with the Honorable Minister because he sees me as a brother and we have that close relationship. Not on official grounds, but I told him what you have done, the approval of this um, um, allowance by the cabinet only proves to nurses and other healthcare workers that you don't care enough about them. He explained that it is something starting, but it will get to other sectors of course. I said, but if it is just starting, what stopped you from including the nurses in the ministry who have been moved from the institutions? No justification was given. So I, 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 I'm telling you this. In October, August to October 2020, nurses and midwives, cognizant of that some allowances are just hundred dollars and two hundred dollars. Sadly, they want to explain here. They, they, they made a proposal and sent it to the Ministry of Health. The proposal was taken for bilaterals at the PMO. The PMO rejected that because it was not properly defended. And I happen to be privy to the reasons why it was not properly defended. Because losses were underrepresented at the bilaterals. And this information I am giving you is not false because I have been there always and I talk to them, they talk to me, they give me information that I need to know. So in October, when they said the bilaterals could not accept that because the government is short of resources to fund, to fund those allowances. Let me even um, tell you the allowances. For a nurse attendant, we'll just have an increment of not up to $2,000. An SCN, second level nurses, will have an increment of not up to $3,000. An RN will have a, 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 an increment of not up to $4,000. These are small amounts of money that definitely needed no chaos. You understand? So the, when, when those allowances were rejected, they said government had no money. We did not take any action. We were thinking of ways to properly deal with the situation. On the 5th of February 2021, cabinet approved allowances to be paid to honorable minister and doctors and few PhD holders just to make it look like nurses are involved, but they are not. And then we went back to them and said, well, you said the government had no money. And the monies that were approved for this category of people could pay the allowances of all the nurses in this country without even thinking twice. This is the situation. We went there and said, okay, now we accepted the faith of the, the, the proceedings at the bilaterals because we wanted to understand this nation, understand the people of this nation, understand the government and serve the people. But what happened in the end? They went and then went on the ground, do some, some work for themselves alone, and then came out with it. Where is the parity? Where is the equality in this country, in the health sector? Then when we, when we, heard, an, uh, we heard about that, nurses were agitated. They wanted to go on strike to make sure problems are solved immediately. We, the executive body, decided to console them. I am not looking anywhere to say these things because they are things I know by head. They are the realities. We consoled them and told them, can we first ask for a press conference so that the general public can be aware of what is happening to their nurses, for them to know that we may be forced to leave them in isolation even though our hearts are not there. And that is hurting us more. We are today here, not because we are not paid, but because we are forced to be against our own people. By a government, a ministry that never cared about the people and never cared about us. We had several meetings with the SG, Secretary General, uh, Secretary General Head of Civil Service, Mr. Noha Ture, at this um, uh, uh, State House Office of the President. After the meetings, it was concluded on the 11th of May at around 3 p.m. The letter was drafted the same day 
for nurses to be paid these allowances, the agreed allowances, free allowances. And that letter was sent to the permanent secretary, Ministry of Health, copied to the Ministry of Finance, copied to me as the Secretary General of the Association, as evidence for them to hold on to their awards. And do you know what led us to that? Because initially, the discussions were held, and then the agreement was that July 2021, they would pay these allowances. The SG pleaded with us during that meeting to say that the resources of the government is not much. Can we consider starting this in August? Almost all my colleagues at the committee meeting there, at the meeting there, disagreed. They had foreseen this. But still, I was blindly trusting people. I halted that meeting for 10 minutes, took my members out of that meeting, convinced them to agree because I told them, let us look at the future. July alone is one month, but when this starts, it's going to continue forever. I managed to convince them somehow we went back and agreed and compromised because we are putting the patients first. You understand? Then that letter was ignored, the letter of the SG that was dated on the 11th of May. These dates are important, please. Because the minister was saying something like, you know, when you make these payments, it goes to the bank, central bank, it takes two, three days. I am telling you, they had more than 100 days to solve all these problems. And I will also tell you categorically clear that everything they are saying there is just to paint themselves white. The reality of the situation is not being told to you. And you will not know if we don't speak out. That is why I am here. On the 11th of May, the letter was sent. It was ignored by the Ministry of Health under the leadership of Dr. Ahmad Samati. Because whatever happens under your ministry, whether you are conscious or subconscious of it, it is your duty to turn to all of it. You don't have to defend your people against the people, the larger number that you lead, against Gambians that are innocent and should receive health care. <laughs> On the 17th of June, the office of SD wrote a reminder to the Ministry of Health that we, wrote, we sent you a letter on the 11th of May. 11th of May to the 17th of June is one month, five days. Or how many days? Yes. One month, six days. Nothing has happened. One of the most senior officers of this country write to you and you ignore it. Just because a particular cadre is neglected by you that had led you to insubordination and sabotage of the government and you come here, you want to blame us for that? On the 17th of May, this email was sent. I have that email with me. And they cannot contest it because I have facts. On the 18th of May, some minutes after 2 o'clock, I know, 3 p.m., I can tell you the time if I want to look at it. The email was replied by Permanent Secretary JT to say that they needed, the minister needed to do one or two things about it, and then they will forward it to finance. Now, from 11th of May to the 18th of June, what have, what have they done? Absolutely nothing about it. Now, 11, 18th of May to 18th, 18th of June to 18th of July is one month. 18th of July to the 5th of uh, August is almost 20 days. You understand? So, from the reminder, they did nothing. On the 24th of August, they wrote to us and say, we, due to computation problems, computation, we cannot pay you these allowances this month. We have to pay you in September. Where are we dragging to? We put aside our dignity. We calmed down our people for months. We gave them promises. Because they gave us promises and assurances with later. They, they put us in the middle and put our integrity to a test. And this is what hurts us more. Because we decided to go against the will of nurses of for July, convince them to agree with us because we trusted them. We trusted the office of the Secretary General. We trusted all the parties, Ministry of Finance, PMO, and all other parties represented at that meeting. But they, what did they do in the end? They waited until the 24th of August and sent us that letter that they cannot pay August anymore. They have to pay July. Integrity is a problem in this country. In September. Integrity is a problem in this country. You write to a people from the most important office of this country and you decided to break that agreement with no justifiable reason. 
and you write to them to tell them that they have to wait for one more month. How are you sure that even a layman, a child of two years, can trust you if you promise him breakfast, you never gave him. You promise him lunch, you never gave him. And you promise him dinner, he wants to trust you again? There is no way. They decided to tell you that they were working on the computation. Computers, and let me tell you, it's just like entering my name, my, my details, and my payroll number, which should already have been existing with them. As a ministry, if this country is serious about its people. I'm telling you. We are suffering from institutional stagnation in this country, and this is the truth. Things that are supposed to take one day, take one month, and things that are supposed to take one month, take five years. This is why we cannot move. If somebody is, the total number of nurses in this country is not over 3,000 people that are working. Now, 3,000 people divided by 100 days, even no matter how slow you are in typing, even if you are doing 40 people a day or 50 people a day, from 8 p.m. to 4 p.m., as you are supposed to work for the government, not to be on Facebook, not to be doing unnecessary things, to be there for your people. You should be able to finish that within 100 days. One sign that can show you that they never took any decision or never took any action about this is this. On, on, on Thursday last week, which must fall around the... What was the date on Thursday? It was up to around 26th. Around the 26th, yeah. They wrote to the hospitals and told them to make sure that they provide them with lists of their staff before 10 a.m. on that day. That's the time they gave those people. Now, something that was approved in May on the 11th, how come the names that you need, the people that you need to pay, their names are being requested on the 26th? Logically, does it make sense? How can you convince us that you were working on it? What way are you working on? Empty Microsoft file documents? The names that you needed were not with you for more than 100 days. And do you know what led to them writing to the hospitals? Because they wrote to us on the 24th that they wanted to push it to September. We wrote back to them on the 25th and said, this information only proves your negligence. I will say it aloud, your incompetence, your low lack of concern for Gambians and the health system of this country. That is why you do this. And these words are my words. I am the secretary. I wrote them there and it is true. So when they saw that letter from us, and in that letter we told them the agreement is August, and August 31st, if nothing happens, whatever comes out of it, you will have to face the Gambians and explain to them, not us. Then this was what triggered them to put pressure on the hospitals. So meaning the September proposal they made to us was just a mere fake information. Because if at all they got the, the, the list from the hospitals earlier, we would have understood that they were working on it, but they were late. But they only started working on it on the 26th. And this I can attest to you. That is why the letters were sent to the hospitals, for them to give them the names of, the, of, of, of their staff. You understand? So when the names were sent, on the 31st, they had another plan. That is, let us just make sure we, we, we fast track and pay a few of them to make sure that somebody is paid and somebody can say, I am paid. So that when they go on strike, we can go and fool the Gambian people by telling them that we even paid them, but they still went on strike. The reality is the list of the hospitals is still kept in their offices. They are going back and forth from minister, ministry, uh, PSS office to treasury, from treasury back to ministry, ministry back to treasury because one or two things went wrong because somebody somewhere did not do his job because it was late, it was done in a haste and nothing can go accurately. So this is the reality of the situation. Nurses embark on a sit-down strike we would have shut down the entire health system. 80%, I told you, average of healthcare delivery is done by nurses. If 80% is withdrawn from anything, what is left? Nothing.
we are considerate and we are compassionate towards the Gambian people. And that is the reason why we decided to put even the Mustitan strike in stages. Stage one, emergency services, our mothers, the pregnant women will be taken care of, our people in the ICUs will be taken care of, our people in the dialysis unit will be taken care of, COVID-19 centers will continue operating because we don't want people to die. We want to send them a message. And we have sent them a message. Other departments have not been working, are not working today. And this will continue for three days. If they are serious about us and the people of this country, they will try to make sure they fulfill the agreement in three days. And after three days, on the 4th of September, if they fail to honor this agreement, there will be total shutdown of nursing health care services. This is not my position. This is the position of nurses and midwives in this country. I happen to be a leader amongst them, but I don't control them. They decide, and I go ahead, rationalize with them, talk to them, and that is what I have been doing all this while. That is what we have been doing all this while. But since the Ministry of Health has decided to fail this nation, there is nothing much we can do. We have to make sure the reality prevails. In conclusion, the satisfaction of nurses is a key determinant of ensuring quality health care service delivery. Threatening them or asking them to resign is definitely not a wise decision a leader should take. As a leader, you should put yourself in the shoes of your subordinates and put their interests first. Nurses' salaries can barely put food on the plates. Nurses merely want to meet the basic minimums, food, water, and shelter. We live from paycheck to paycheck, and that is the reality of our situation. I thank you all. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Usman. I think you have stated our position very clearly. The reason why we are embarking on this sit-down strike is not out of our will, but we want to show to the general public that the Minister of Health, they are not people that, are, that usually stick to their words. Because as he said, this thing has been going on for months. They still cannot implement a, single, a very simple tax. Which is just to input the name, the payroll number, and the amount that the individual should receive. So for up to 100 days. So at this point, why we don't want to go for a complete sit down? Because we want to give, we are extremely concerned about the welfare of the general public. That's why we said we are just going to provide limited service. But I think if they care about the health of the public, as the SG said, they will honor the agreement within these three days and make sure that every single nurse who's supposed to receive this salary or, or the allowance receives his or her allowance. That is from now against Friday. So at this juncture, I will entertain questions and answers from the press. So the executive is here to answer the questions. Anyone who wants to answer any questions, you can raise your hand and you come forward. Yes. yes.
don't you think that it's going to be a very accomplished job mm -hmm. by the association? Because we all know that the uh, Gambians need healthcare uh, system in this country. We all know we have a very fragile healthcare system, but we still need to fix that as well. And then you are like, the magic of the system, not the most other parts, but also the green leaf jar. I am the poor, I'm not the poor. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'll just say briefly, and the owners can respond or so add on to that. First, as the I don't know whether you were listening to what the SG was saying, that this was a move that was geared towards like say you pay some, let's just rush and pay some, so that when they say that they have received, others will say okay, let's let's and uh, let's forget about them. The basic health service is just a component. The the total number of staff we have at the Edward Fuzzy is small. It's more than the, the nurses, who is equal to nurses in the basic health service. So if we are paid some, and not in fact everybody has received, our, our, our motto is pay every nurse and we continue the service. That's the, that's the basic. But we don't want a situation where they will pay few as what they did in the COVID-19 hours. Still now, up to today, some nurses do not benefit, and the things goes like that. So the, we don't want this, this status quo to remain. We want every nurse to receive is or are two. Okay, about political involvement, I think that was a very misleading statement by the minister. I think he was the one who was played the political gimmicks, not the nurses. Our profession, we are professionals and we are apolitical. You've never walked into any health facility that a nurse manifests his political affiliation to you. We don't care about, we don't care for a patient based on political affiliation. We care for them based on a non-spatial relationship. That he is your patient and you have to care. There is no political influence in this, our nursing strike. We are not involved with any political party. I think he was the one who was playing political games. But some of the statements he in fact is saying, materials are available. Let him come out and show, oh, he can take you around and show you where are the materials. Put him to tax. I think some of those things, when they are mentioned, put him to tax to take you around to basic health facilities or even the hospital here, which is the closest. Let the minister take you there and tell you that there are materials. Even the simple thing, gloves. You go to banks, you see excess of gloves. There are nurses have to be a, use one gloves for 20 patients. Our procedure is even if you are caring for one patient, like we are dressing the leg, once you use that glove, you should discard that glove when you are carrying for the head, you wear a, a new glove. But instead of that, you are using one glove to care for all the patients. That's true. And you are putting their life at risk. But you cannot leave them like that. Let them die like that. If he wants, if he says those gloves are available, we can say now provide the gloves and it will work. If you don't provide the gloves, we continue. We sit down until gloves are available. Or you put him to tax to take you around to those places where he said the materials are available. And taking telling the, the public that we usually hide those materials and ask them to go and buy those materials. I think no statement can be more false than that. No statement. No sin is a, is a we, are high, we are all professionals. Professional like any professional that can be. So the issue is that statement is never true. Nobody will hide. If, if he has evidence, why not he sue that individual? But you are just making it clear, if you know that that is existing and you are not taking that part of the tax, then what, what is your role now? Maybe you are also complicit in that, in that act. So let him take the individual who is doing that, those that are holding the materials, and asking the public to go and buy. He should do that or uh, else he is not doing his job properly. This is what I, I don't know whether I have answered your question. I think yes. I have a question. Yes. That one. Yeah. No, it's not. Uh, it's not. 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 I want to make it categorically clear that Nagam is non-political, like the president said. We are non-partitioned. Our roles and responsibilities are to address the welfare and the concern of nurses throughout the country. 
Um, we are concerned with the fact that the president of the Republic of the Gambia, uh, Mr. Adam Abaro, is the president of the Gambia, and is our president has knows it, and we all respect. And in fact, in our constitution, every year the association, the executive members, submit the president to tell him about the plans that we have for our noses and also to seek advice from him. And plans are on the way to meet the president of the republic as an executive member to talk to him about the plans that we have. Um, it was very myopic for the minister of health of the country to come and think about the, the, the nursing professions is associated with projects. Um, it is very um, important to clarify it out there. After sending that message on the Facebook page, I send it in my capacity as the PRO of the Nurse and Midwife Association. I understand that I talked some other people which I wasn't aware of, and later I was notified that some people were attacked. And I tagged these people because I was not aware that I was tagging them. I wanted to tag my members. But some instance, things happen, and we are all human beings. And I will sincerely apologize to the people that I tagged. They are not, I don't have any um, relationship with them. I don't share any political, I mean, political I mean, opinion with them. So I just tag them mistakenly. So I want to apologize to those people. Um, Mr. Uh, Mohamed Savali and Omar C. But in fact, Omar C is a veteran nurse and ophthalmologist. So tagging him, I think, even mistakenly, will not be a problem. For Mohamed Savali, I think he will not take any legal action against me, but I want to apologize for tagging him, not the Ministry of Health. So let the Honorable Minister of Health talk with the fact that noise are non protocol um, He cannot come and say that we are being backed by politicians. We have never and ever consulted any political party, any political leader, or any individual politician, any action that we are taking. It was very, very misleading, and then it was a very unprofessional statement from the side of the uh, uh, Minister of Health. The threat that we have been saying all over the media about the noises, the threats, we are used to it. I will give you a short, a short scenario. When the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmad Samadhi, was appointed in office, the first profession that we victimized was not in this country, and unlawfully. I am going to make it clear that noises at Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital held a press conference to, 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 to engage the community, the general public, about the frustration that they are faced with at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. In fact, under the leadership of Dr. Ahmad Samade when he was the CMD at the time. So we can see leadership deficiency from the start. From, from, from that was a serious leadership deficiency since at this time point. When Dr. Samade was the minister of uh, CMD, things were not going well at the hospital, uh, at Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. Notice came out to engage the, uh, the general public to tell their frustration to them. On that very day of the press conference, in the evening, the letter was received that Dr. Ahmad Samade was appointed as the Minister of Health. On that particular day, the day of the press conference. In the evening of the press conference, nurses came together to cherish and celebrate Dr. Samade because we believe that he will make changes when he goes to the ministerial level. After some days, a letter was sent to the association, EFS Stage Nursing Association, from the hospital management board that to summon the executive members for a meeting headed by the board chairman, Dr. Sala. In attendance was Dr. Hamad, uh, Hamad Samad in his capacity as the Minister of Health at the time and also as the CMB at the time. The, Dr. Charles Sobot was deputy CMB. The former chief, um, chief matron, Mr. Father Sala, was also in attendance. And all of veteran nurses and the executive members of the EFS State Association. During the meeting, Dr. Samad came lately he was, asked, he was going to accompany the president at the, state, uh, at, at, at the airport. When he arrived, he vetted his anger, his antagonist, against nurses. From there, he said so many bitter words and left immediately. He couldn't even listen to the other side of the story. Dr. Mamar Sala warned the executive members and told them that it was illegal for them to convey a press conference. I don't know where did he get the legal advice from. Our position still remained the same at the time. Again, from that meeting, the warning letter was sent to us from the administration, from the hospital management board. The executive of the Edward Francis Martin was to reply to that and make their position very clear and maintain their position. On, fifth, on Friday, when Dr. Samade was at the Ministry of Health, Mr. Parasa, who was the chief matron and his assistant matron, Ms. Madam Fatou Sane, and Fatou, Fatou Sanyang, and Landing. Landing was the matron at pediatrics. Dr. Samate, under his leadership at the ministry, victimized these people unlawfully. On Friday, imagine a veteran nurse like Dr. Mr. Patasaho, Patusanya, and Landing. You call them at the Ministry of Health, give them a letter, and redeploy them. You did ridicule their effort, demoralize everything that they did for the health in the health sector. You redeploy them 
deliberately at the low level. In fact, it is not only the redeployment. They were asked to submit all the belongings of the hospital and everything that very Friday between 11 to 12. What could be more heartless and inhuman than this? A veteran knows who serves and who served decades to improve the service of the health system. He was the chief matron at Edo Francis Moti. This is where the first time started. Since his first assignment at the office, uh, at the office of the ministry, when he was newly appointed, this is just one week after his appointment. Notice came together to meet Mr. Pade Saho and the team to challenge that decision. But thanks to the, and the diligence and foresightedness of Mr. Saho, Mr. Pade Saho's leadership, he was able to calm us down and surrender his complaint in the hands of the Almighty Allah. We want to further take an action to take a march pass on Monday to the Minister of Health to meet the Permanent Secretary to bring back Pade Saho and the team. The word from Mr. Dr. Ahmad Samada was, when the nurses marched to the ministry, he was going to do something terrible. This is what Dr. Samada tells the nurses. That if they marched to the ministry, I will do something terrible. How could a minister tell this to nurses? It was very inhuman. At the office of the president, personally, I told the Secretary General ahead of civil service, the manner at which Patesau and the team were redeployed was not in accordance with the laws. The PMO was not aware. There are proceedings for everything. Dr. Samada used his powers as the Minister of Health to redeploy these people, redeploy their efforts. And this is unacceptable. From today, we are going to tell the entire nation that really, um, victimization of nurses has stopped. We are not going to accept any form of victimization of nurses. We were going to write a petition for Padesau and the team to come back to Edward Francis Moti University. But Padesau still maintains still Jekyll and address issues with candor. But if somebody talk about the COVID regulation that the Gambia has the best way COVID response, uh, the best COVID response in Africa or in the world among the best. I am going to make it very clear that this country has the worst COVID response system in the world of Africa. Since the COVID started, how many millions were pumped in the health sector? It's a lot. This money will have been used to build standard health centers and possibly like our other countries did, Ghana and other countries. To raise our nurses and frontline healthcare workers. But instead, the money was diverted into the hotel industry to rent hotels and quarantine people. That resulted so many young Gambians lose their position. Is this not political? How many young Gambians lose their position at the hotel industry? Currently, we have seen so many young Gambians sitting without any job. So if Dr. Samara is saying nurses have been political, I doubt where was he when he was making that decision. He was talking about Nemban. As we are speaking now, go to Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. How many COVID patients are together in the same world with patients who are not COVID patients? Are they going to wait until when the entire hospital is affected and they come and come and find a solution? One of the weakness of that COVID response team is to turn secondary health center and hospital to a COVID treatment center, which was completely destroyed by the general public. That was the fatal mistake that the Minister of Health could ever talk of. How important and crucial the Secondary General Hospital was, I mean, is for a minister to turn that to a COVID treatment center. It's definitely a failure from the, government, from the, from the side of the ministry in terms of responding, responding to the COVID treatment. So I think the, uh, the, um, the honorable minister should go back to the drawing board and then make his homeworks, consult the relevant authorities, put him seated in office, to advise the government broadly. Um, the entire country is shocked. In turn, we are all disappointed in Dr. Samade. We don't have any confidence in the leadership. And we are going to make it up. Thank you. Okay. Um, coming to the third question, which is um, don't we think it will be fatal for us to go on a total sit down strike? Okay. I'm going to answer your question. But he made mention of one point that I need to clarify. He said, um, when uh, he talked about when Pate Saho and Pate Sanyang were redeployed, I inquired about it. They told me the reason or justification was underperformance. My friend, I asked them, which tools did they use to assess underperformance in just two weeks or less? Because Dr. Samate was the CMD of the hospital. If there was underperformance, he was part of it. 
But when he became the minister, in barely two weeks, he was able to assess underperformance and redeploy some people. This is definitely not the way things go. Before you can assess underperformance, you have to build tools or use tools to assess and grade people over a duration substantial enough to come to a decision. And this had not happened in that case. So I just wanted to add that for people to know. That too I was previewed. Now coming to your question whether it won't be very bad or uh, what was your choice of word? Catastrophic. Good. Whether it won't be catastrophic for us to go on a complete sit-down strike. It is already catastrophic that most of the nurses here were not able to sleep last night thinking about what could happen to patients. And this is the reality. Our anger now is not about the money. It's about the situation that they put us to. We pledge to be by our, now, our patients all our life. Even after resigning, you can still offer advice to people in the society as a nurse. We advocate for our nurses against them. We stand for them, we read for them, we spend nights reading to make sure when mistakes are made by counterparts on their management and treatment, we will stand and say, no, sir, we cannot do this, the patient may suffer. So that has already been at the back of our mind. It is already catastrophic that this is happening. It could be more catastrophic. And the people responsible is the Ministry of Health, not the nurses. They have the whole of today. They can go and talk to Central Bank. When they want executive directives, when they wanted to move Padesau and Padesanya, they didn't follow the normal processes. So why would they follow the normal process when the entire country's health is at stake? Let them go to the central bank and negotiate with them. Let them bend the rules and get the things done. They have been doing that. That is the nature in this country. Why, could it, why couldn't it be used in a more useful avenue? When it is personal interest at stake and personal grievances, rules are bent. When it is public and national interest, procedures are put forward. Why? Let them go and sort it out. It is not our problem. It is the problem of the entire country that is orchestrated by the ministry that people entrusted with their health and they are letting us down as a nation. I could be sick and I wouldn't find somebody to take care of me. When I collapse, I can take care of myself, my brothers and sisters. So do you think we are not looking at this? We know what is at stake when there is total shutdown. If I fell, uh, fall ill, I go to the hospital where there is total shutdown and there is no nurse, the tendency that I will survive is very low. But our lives are on the line as well as the lives of the public. So no one is excluded in the harm being inflicted by the Ministry of Health. Address them, ask them, question them, talk to them, let them come and face you and tell you the reality and do what is real to achieve reality. Thank you. Well, um, our leadership is not autocratic. It is a democratic leadership. The executive of nurses don't force anybody into anything. We look at the interests of the majority and the voice of the majority. If there is a minority who goes against us for any reason known to them, that is their problem. The efforts of majority of the nurses cannot be drilled by a few people who are there based on self and personal interests, not the interests of the nation. Because if five nurses or ten happen to go against the National Association, the contempt against nurses will continue and it can lead to bigger problems for the public health sector in this country. Now, for instance, if those people who are, who are saying that they are not with the nurses, let us refer all the patients to them. I bet patients will suffer because they cannot handle it. So it is simple. We bring information to our people, console them when it is necessary, 
take the necessary measures to solve their concerns and needs. But it is obviously obvious that there is always a 5% which never agrees. And this is not my words, but words based on research. No matter what you do, there is always a 5% of a people that will always stand against you. Even if you say my name is Usman Toure, there is a 5% of the people that will go and say no, his name is Samba Toure. I knew it when he was born, it was first somebody and became Usman. They will have a way to, to ridicule every reality in this world. And some of them are being used because they are relatives, uncles or aunties or brothers are uh, at the Ministry of Health. You see, let me tell you. I would have also maybe, perhaps, stayed out of this, but I wouldn't. The Honorable Minister sees me as a brother, calls me a brother, and terms me a brother. My education currently at the university is indirectly being sponsored by him. Indirectly, I don't mean directly, he facilitated it. And he supported me in many ways. But whenever nurses matters comes up, I tell him the truth. And that is what I have ever done. When this matter came up in May, before the Tavaski, after the nurses' um, week celebration, because I said some statements there, which didn't go down well with the, with, the, with, the, with the representatives from the ministry, I can tell you that Nurses' Week is commemorated internationally every year in May, but the nurses, uh, the Ministry of Health, the Gambia, did not even release a single statement to say to put to put, put take a part on the backs of nurses to say you are doing well. This is your week. We thank you. It never happened. When we celebrated the Nurses' Week, we sent three people um, in the presence of um, uh, Mr. Karamba JJ, Al Haji Sen, and uh, uh, Dr. Manjang, the Director of Nurses and Military Services. When they came, instead of uh, Karamba, who spoke on behalf of the minister, uh, commemorating the day, he went there and started ridiculing us. And I combated his statements. I combated it very well, because my people cannot be insulted by anybody. When that happened, we said we should have a dialogue with them on matters affecting the health system and the nurses. Remember? They were supposed to be at the ceremony. At least one person should be there at the entire ceremony. But after combating his statements, they, the three of them, all got up and said they wanted to leave. And they gave an excuse that there is an urgent meeting going on at the Ministry of Health. That meeting could have had two of them there and one of them with us. They are not the minister, they are not the permanent secretary. They could be represented by other people. But they left because they don't want to answer to the people of this country on the flaws of the health system. And that is not the right way to lead people. You don't mask your flaws, you face them boldly and solve problems. This is what we should do as a nation. But that is not what is happening in the health system. So in May, after that press conference, every message I sent him was not replied. Every call I made to him was not picked. I decided not to go to his office because our relationship was more than that. He would call me at 11 a.m. or 12 a.m. at night and we will still talk. But after the press conference, after the noise celebration, that stopped. I wanted to advise him on this matter before today, to be honest, as a brother, as someone he calls a brother. To advise him to make sure PS does the job that is requested after the reminder was sent on the 17th June, but every message I sent him was never replied, every call I made was never answered. But this is a platform to advise him. Let him take the healthcare system seriously by taking nurses seriously. This idea of coming to mask situations will not work because we know what is happening and we can say what is happening. And that is what we are saying today. I don't know what will happen to the relationship. I have nothing against him as a person, but I have something against him as a ministry that derails every effort that is made by nurses and every compromise we took to avert this situation run down the drains just because they didn't do their work properly. I have one last question. Sorry. 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 I have a question regarding the ministry's threat to 
about the Moses Fraternity. Anyways, I am Wendy Sisi from Ketra. Uh, the minister said you know, to us, you know, Moses who are going to sit without going to work today by the name of the strike, will be punished. What will be the next step of Moses if even one of you will be punished because of the sit down strike? Our philosophy is simple. It is one for all, all for one. No one is left in isolation. Whoever takes themselves out of the group to isolate themselves, we have no control over that. Like I said, we are a democratic, not an autocratic executive group. If somebody chooses to be on their own, we will leave you to be on your own. And if you choose to come back, we will welcome you. But if somebody is victimized for being one of us, that person will never be left alone. And it will be easy to remove a few people, a few folks at the public office, than remove all nurses from the healthcare system. No government can risk it. No government in this world can risk it. If you follow the, the World Health Organization Secretary General, he would always commend nurses, thank nurses, for what they are doing during this pandemic. The pandemic would have been a catastrophic, catastrophic nurses were left behind. This is the reality. So if the health system thinks, or if the ministry thinks that the government of the Gambia will be left by the public of the Gambia to uh, make nurses entirely leave these health services for the sake of 10 people, it is not working. It doesn't work that way. And it's a, if, if, if they want, if they want to, if they want to take means of perhaps dictatorship, which I don't think they will, let them go and build bigger prisons because we are all ready to go in together. You can go allow us. Yes, um, thank you very much. Uh, this is not the first time that the nurses have threatened to go on to that like us too. Uh, this 72 hours is left to the Ministry of Health to save the entire country. But the, the signs and symptoms that we are seeing as of now, as far as we are concerned at this point in time, uh, the Ministry of Health is not doing what they're supposed to do. So to address this to save the entire country. And that shows that the Ministry of Health doesn't care about the health of our system. The larger group like nurses demand that they should be paid within 72 hours, or else there will be a serious health crisis in this country, which is catastrophic. And I can tell you, we mean this and we will do it. Nothing will come out from the Minister of Health except threatening the nurses, telling them to go to work and go against their decision. Is that not dictatorial? That is worse. That is the worst dictatorial. So we are telling the general public and the journalists that nothing can change our decision except if the Minister of Health pays the entire notice of this country. Um, we have seen how the situations are. If so somebody is claiming that we have materials, like the president said, I have evidence, we have evidences that even Edward Francis Moore teaching hospital, the decisions have been made for gloves, for marks from the world, from the theaters. And in fact, as we are speaking right now, patients, even an emergency operation will buy gloves. We have to wait until your family members buy gloves and we do our emergency CS for Yesterday, Dr. Samara made it very clear that nurses are prescribing things for the patients to buy. That's a sabotage to the system. I want to make it clear to the general public that at Edward Francis, most of the nurses are not allowed to prescribe. So if Dr. Samara say that that's a sabotage to the system, I think he is now talking to the people who are prescribing for the patients to go and buy. So that states that nurses are not prescribing for any patient at Edward Francis Moore Teaching Hospital. So this, in fact, exposed Dr. Samatha's, um, like we stated in our statement, that the incompetency to know the system properly. As the minister, you don't even know what is happening in your health system. You don't even know the protocol at the biggest, the country's teaching hospital. In fact, we want to, this is not, we're not being political, but we have to refer ourselves to the people who are in support of our development. Quite a number of times, myself, 
and some of the group of the nurses from the school of nurse, school of nurses and midwifery will approach the office of the mayor. As a member of the board at the Edward Francis, not in his capacity as a politician, her, her capacity as a politician, to ask her to give us boxes of masks. The mayor will help us boxes of masks in her capacity as a member of the board member at the Edward Francis Hospital. Quite a number of times, when myself and group of people will go to her office, and she will give us a lot of face masks to be distributed among our nurses. She saved so many nurses from the, so many infectious diseases. If not for her intervention, most of the nurses here would have been contacted with COVID-19 COVID and other infectious diseases because she constantly provides us with face masks. Of recent, there is a total I mean, shortage of water at the school where we train our nurses to become a veteran nurses in this country, at the school. Mayor has to intervene. She has to intervene to make sure she dig a borehole and provide materials for the nurses at the particular at the school so that they can, be benefit, they can benefit from that and the school, nurses who are staying at the hospital can also get benefit from all these things. Many times we feel ashamed to go to her office to talk to her and break her things. But because the love that she has for the government women, because that the love that she has for the people at the hospitals and the people of Banyu and the other people, the mayor is always on her. Anytime I knock at her door, she supply us with material. What is our ministry doing instead of blaming James? So the Ministry of Health is boasting that they are sponsoring nurses to, uh, to specialize in midwifery and anesthesia. What is it? What a leadership problem at the ministry. We have a problem. We want to solve the problem. It's not to post. I am the PRO. Is it, a, is, it, is it a miracle to award a PRO a scholarship? I was awarded a scholarship by the Ministry of Health. And this scholarship was not because I called anybody to help me or I have a relative. These scholarships were based on merit. Everybody who was awarded to do that specialized skills in anesthesia and midwifery went through a rigorous training, interview, to be awarded a scholarship, which I also went through, and I was awarded a scholarship. So I should call, I should call a press conference to tell the entire country the minister awarded me a scholarship. I never know. I would have done that. So, in fact, finally, I was awarded a scholarship since when I was in primary, I'm Bill 7, from the former region at Delhi Foundation. Up to grade 12, I was, I, was, I was having a scholarship based on merit. When I completed my grade 12 at the University of the Gambia, my first degree, I was awarded a scholarship from the Ministry of Higher Education under the IDEMS leadership. So if the Ministry of Health is coming today and they award me a scholarship, I am telling them that in my capacity as the PRO, I took the scholarship, I am doing my specialized area in anesthesia, I'll complete my program and go back to the remote villages in the country and serve my people yes. at the cattle. At, at, at China. I am going to take this scholarship. I'll be here come 2022, 2023. I'll complete my, my specialized area in anesthesia and my colleagues in the main area of midwifery. I will be happy for ministers to take me to Koina to serve my Gambian people. The scholarship is not from any of their pocket or the office of the Minister of Health. It's from the Ministry of Health that the poor Gambian people and the farmers are the ones that are paying for us, not the Ministry of Health. So they cannot take credit for that, please. So I want to make the category clear. <laughs> If the Ministry of Health and the Government of the Gambia cares about the lives of our Gambian people, they should do all what they could. Even though we have seen some myopic leadership, they could do what they what they can in their capacity to resolve this amicably. Our position still remains the same as of yesterday. And before I go further, in fact, I assure all the nurses, your PRO is telling you that. The victimization of nurses has stopped. <laughs> touch one nurse, touch one nurse, the entire health system will collapse. Yeah. <laughs> we are warning, in my capacity, in fact, I am warning the Minister of Health that if they go by their decision to victimize a nurse in this country, a single nurse, the entire health system will collapse within a second. <laughs> so if the Ministry of Health want to resolve this problem, let them come, let them go back to the drawing table, sit in their offices, try to find solutions to address issues, not to ventilate, not to ventilate their antagonists, not to disturb our eardrums, with political terms. We are not politicians. We are not politically motivated. We are not associating ourselves with any political party. 
President Adam Abaro is the President of the Republic of the Gambia. Nurses and midwives respect him as the President. We are behind him in any meaningful development. And we are not enemies and we are not in any conflict or confrontation in any way with the Minister of Health. We are not enemies. We are partners in development. We will continue to work with the Minister of Health and the Government of the Gambia in any meaningful development to improve the health of this country. So let people not see that we are enemies with the Minister of Health. We want the leadership of the Minister of Health to, to, be, to be responsible, to be scrupulous in masterminding their responsibilities that accrue to the office. Let them know the, pop, the office that they are occupying. Somebody was there before them. Somebody will come there before after them. It can be any of the nurses. So we want to warn them strictly to solve this matter amicably. Let them come back to the drawing table and make things possible. Not to threaten the nurses. You can never threaten a profession. Nursing profession can never be threatened. You can never threaten this. Thank you. <laughs> Um, the Honorable Minister made a very serious allegation against nurses, and these allegations are unfounded. They are baseless. They did not hold any water. If the Honorable Minister is aware of what is happening at Edward Francis Mochikin Hospital, as I am speaking to you, go to the accident and emergency. Patients are lying on the floor. Some use their mat to lie on the floor. Bed capacity, beds are completely exhausted. Patients have no place to lie down. Journalists have to take that responsibility, go in and see the patients lying on the floor at the, door, at the verandas of Edward Francis Mochikin Hospital, waiting for the treatment. So if the minister is saying the place is messed up with blood, is that not his responsibility? Are the nurses who put the blood on this uh, on the floor? This is the entire administration. This is administrative. This is the lack of administrative techno I mean, technical know-how. Nurses are there to render the service. So in his statement, he did not say that the service, the nurses, the, the, I mean, the, the, the nurses' service was compromised. But he said because the place was stained with blood, he forgot to know that patients are still lying on the floor. Patients have not bed, they, they are struggling to get a bed at Edward Francis Small Children's Hospital. They could not have a bed. So, was in any circumstance trying to communicate with the police so that these um, um, uh, situations can be It's not our responsibility to call the Ministry of Health and tell them that this is what is happening. The hospitals are generating one income. So, that's the hospital. We are nurses. We are employed by the Ministry of Health. What's that at the hospital? So the host is not our responsibility to communicate to the Minister of Health and tell them no space. there's a blood stain at the, uh, on the floor. So I think it's important, let the, let, 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 the, let the Honorable Minister know. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Well, let me, let me make some clarification. Yes, let me make clarification on that question. Like, blood, there is blood stain on the floor and, and, and nurses are not doing their duty. First of all, that is not the job description of nurses, we have orderlies that's supposed to be cleaning the floor. I worked at Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. If you go to a &E, there it is, it is overcrowded. As he said, patients are currently lying on the floor. In my capacity as, as a staff or a senior staff at Edward Francis Small, I made this suggestion. So just even to him, himself who was there, on that day when he was going, I met with him about the congestion in that place. I told him that the veranda here where the ambulance usually stop. The place is there lying lying it's not it's not I would like police. It's 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 too tight. What they can do is to find aluminium seats and just put a enclosure in that place. That place you can have ten beds. Just as a, 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 a way of you know decreasing the congestion in that place. So that patients will not be lying on the floor. You know, what was his response? He said they have now handed over social welfare to Edward for the small teaching hospital. But before you go and spend millions to renovate that social welfare, 
This place you can just spend one hundred thousand dollars, less than hundred thousand dollars, and remedy the whole congestion situation at A and E. But the people come with their suggestions. Yeah, even A and E when COVID started, there was a room that was used as a lab. I went up to the management of Edward Francis Small. I told him that what we can do as a contingency is let's renovate this uh, this lab, open it so that any person that comes with infectious disease before they enter into the world, they will be go, they will be they will stay at that place and someone will wear a full PPE and come and examine that individual whether he's he's COVID-19 or not. They neglected that 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 suggestion. You know what happened when the Senegalese team came? And they pay millions of dollars for that Senegalese team to lodge in hotels. I gave that suggestion that they never, they never, they never listened to it. The Senegalese, when they came, it was the same suggestion that they give. Immediately, within 24, they started renovating at that place. Now, even today, the renovation is not completed. Oh, there. I'm not giving you. So, people are here, they give them suggestions. We come with tangible suggestions. But because I don't know whether they are not committed. Oh, the idea is not coming from them. They are not listening to it. You understand? We give them lots of suggestions. Personally, advise them about, about this. But maybe because it's come from a, 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 a north like this was Maybe they don't value him. They think that the Senegalese are more educated than us. That's why they don't value. But you spend ten thousand dollars on Senegalese, they are doing they go and give you the same suggestion. So this is the reality on the ground. Yes. And, and, and about the nursing supervisors, I think he should know his limitations. For me, personally, I was very disappointed about his president. The president uh, I don't know even every genuine Gambian who understands conflict resolution will know that definitely the minister fails yesterday. That, that platform should have been used as a way of reassuring nurses, but rather to issue threats. And if he continues on that trade, it will be counterproductive. As a board, I'm advising him to desist from his own trade. But threats will be counterproductive. And we don't want that to happen. Okay. One last question. Yes. How so are you on Thursday, mm. uh, like on the 4th of mm. September? Mm. If, in case the minister did not come with any solutions for you guys, mm. whether this, he can use this school of knowledge like, as a backup for you guys. Or you guys and the school of knowledge are all doing this together. <laughs> Well, well, they are student nurses, they are not part of our association. I think they will decide on their own. But what they should understand is nurse, every nurse you see here is registered. You are given a lancing, just like a driver that you are capable of flying on the highway. So the lancing is an assurance to the public that you are safe under the care of this particular nurse. So if student nurses continue to care, they want to come in and care, they are not lancing, they don't have the capacity to do that you know, professional nursing care to, to, to patient. So any outcome that comes out of it, it will the repercussion will be theirs. So they have to understand that situation. So if you are not trained to do any job, you said I'm going to do it. Any outcome, if you kill somebody's patient, they see you no court, you are going to face the law court by yourself. So I hope they will lead to okay. that. Okay, could you yes. tell us in what are some of your expectations from the Ministry of Health and of course the government to meet the demands of the law? Yeah, I think I think okay. The issue is now. I for me, the Ministry of Health. I think I may lose I could lose my confidence in them, but I still see Secretary General as somebody who is very important, influential. He can use his powers. And, and ask the Minister of Health to comply with this, our, our staff, our resolutions from uh, uh, from now against us. I think if he intervenes, this matter will be resolved. But for the Minister of Health, if they are left alone on their own volition, I don't think this matter will be. And it was, as we say, catastrophic for the general public. I think that's So I think without, without any further questions, I just want to use this opportunity to thank the press, though the invitation is very prompt, but you further need to hold an engagement to come and answer to our call. So we thank you very much. Huh? So somebody said it in Maninga. I remember when I knew you no so ning timada in Bangkok, being a commercial car damura, Kasi. So saying in Benya, I remember when I knew you go, no so ning timada. 
emergency service de malawe jela molam ñu ndu men yalla ko bi bal woni sa yaatim melu ko dara wu wu plan anin deme yalla ko e ka men fo axe de na emergency du laldo anin daara ci suni wala be operate ka ñu ngi sit down strike ñu ngi ñu di ka si kaddo ko kaddo ko bula a sunda ministre la ka do la do ko ntaya bal ya ministre of health la pool sambaña ñim ka samba ni sido la sunda wol so wa yati na ko no so ni min wax ci mu dal final sida ke bu la ñoo kam bi kam mi de commande kana frustration no tandi la ka dañ la ko ko ñim banko ka ñame ko nga fa ñu ñame ko ni dal lo kala do ko men beji a sumbo wat la bal so fo ni ministre ka daas lo tele do ka ko mo le ko baga so sudal lo ka no dele nga nga jël so nga foy ko al sita al yeta ministre no ma ay al sita mo dal do baga so be dal yaay tan dal banko mo le yaalo nga faale ko mayo of the banjur city council amaka politik jamoni para la capacity ni kam ka ka ko lo tano la board board member ma ko ko fra ma wato wadi ka dani baga so hal face mask mayo meme banjur wala kam mako face mask at le boholo sin kram mo do pour kram do no ke muna fa no sol meneya ko be kan ya tala no sia kram ni manga politik jamoni ben kra kan ina capacity has no sol ka dani fo la fo fo ko malu ka dan dal ko le fa ni ni la bara ñu fu mo le ko mo do be fa nga at fa ko bojo do ñu so bara ka mek so le bi ko say kan mo so mo so le ko mo so je te man le man le ko mo so je faati mo do ka mek so xana ba fa la ala wal ay account le bi jola kan do kan do la su lo ñu jaam attaquer le vraiment wato wati mais yo ka fe mo na ci ko la ka di mo la so ni ministre ka tassi ko fi ko la ka fa mo le ko le plan do no so man do ko kega baga so bi jele directeur of health service même mo do tembe sa ba bi de alors ñen ak media ko bagas lo plan no do woni bi de han say bagas manje ni ko ministre fa na lo ko mo le ko bagas lo bi de say banko banko mo ba fa ministre ko bagas lo min to la ayta ni mo le say de media commande ni yo ko do ndebe resign ak ko piaro ya ni ministre ay media commande ko bagas lo ndebe resign wolu bagas lo man so do lo plan no do ani mo so ani face na ko ti ngoto nga sa fa ayta ay bagas lo say do bo sa ye bo rol sa doktor lo ka sa do ka so banko be nyaam do say den na health system o amant tra ta ka nyaama wala ti nako na da nga na press conference man di ko mol ko ni kay tan di la ko ko be la den ci ni so waya na nga tendu nga jey kana ke dan ko ma na press conference a wa ka ba that is lego war emergency hemodialysis operation theater and the eu is part of that and also the covid center as of now on till friday so by friday we expect they will comply with our demand that every boss will receive these four allowances by friday inshallah so by after friday if they did not still comply with that for each one should be given that means a, a complete sorting down of losses and midweek charges but you want um in all under the knowledge so we want to go down that be more we are we so we want to Thank you so much.